Okay, on the bench today I've got my SSL bus compressor clone, which I've built from the PDF I downloaded from the Giraf website. I've etched the main board myself, managed to get about 70% of the way through it with components before ordering anything else, um, and then spent about £200 on the rest of it, including the case. Um, I also bought the Super Sidechain mod from PCB Grinder. Um, wasn't even sure what it did at the time, but I'm really glad I've got it in there now. And it's this that I want to take a closer look at today, and actually have a look at the side chain and just see, make sure everything's working okay. And to do that, I'll use my spectrum analyzer in transfer function mode, so we can actually look at the EQ curve, um, see what's happening. Okay, so uh, there was no schematic for the super side chain, but it's quite simple to work out. The left and right inputs come in here through these op amps and then after these capacitors a copy of that goes to the sidechain input and after these 47k resistors they get summed into the sidechain VCA um, and we really need to take our signal from this side of the resistors as this is a, um, a current input. Okay and if we look at the main board the signals come into this side through these op amps they end up at these capacitors and then um, the signal goes to the main VCAs and then a copy goes down to here this is where the 47Ks were so the left and right goes off to the super sidechain board and then a mono comes back and if we follow that line there we can see that this goes to a 47K so I've um, taken a breadboard wire, soldered it onto that end of the resistor so that can go into the second channel of the spectrum analyzer. I thought I'd quickly show you this as well. This is the regular noise output from the spectrum analyzer. But to do the transfer function mode, we're going to have to use the periodic noise output. If I switch that, it looks like this. And the oscilloscope looks static. You can zoom in. Very interesting. And if we actually change bandwidths on the spectrum analyzer, we can see it's very interesting. So we're going to use this HP 3582A spectrum analyzer which I rescued from a skip and brought back to life. Um, I'll just zoom you in. So here we can see we have 0 hertz here up to 500 hertz on this side and if I switch, let's just switch through the settings to Okay, it's looking like I was expecting. Okay, so the first setting is 60 hertz. If I turn my marker on, you can see 60 hertz, we're down 3 dB. The next setting is 90 hertz. And let's just see what's happening at 90 hertz down two and a half db the next setting is 130 hertz okay, down three db again and the last setting is labeled 300 hertz which I think it's a bit high. If we go back down to 3 dB, that's in 188 hertz. So maybe I've got a component wrong on the front panel. I'm not too bothered about that right now. If I ever take the front panel off, I'll investigate. But apart from that, it looks good. Okay, so... 
Let's have a look at the thrust modes. I think we're going to have to change the spectrum analyzer range. So now we have 0 hertz to 25 kilohertz. Off scale. I'm going to change the scale to 10 decibels. Per division. Um, okay, so that's flat. That's thrust medium. And thrust loud. You can see the two different sh curve shapes. So in thrust medium, if we look where 0 dB is, that's about 6.2 kilohertz. So anything after rises up to whoa, 10 dB at the top and at the other end 196 hertz is minus 7 dB. Whereas the thrust loud has a gentle curve. Again, plus 10 to minus 4.